focuses in on training. So, Steve, are, we, are you saying that we need people like yourself here who worked in, uh, in, in terrorism, counterterrorism, uh, intelligence? Do we need people like you to go to some of these local agencies and train these officers? Well, yes, indeed. The FBI could do that, state police, but even more so, uh, uh, every police department, no matter how small, should have an intelligence agency or an intelligence uh, council, all right? You'll have a police officer who's in charge of vetting intelligence. Is there enough money for the police departments to have these types of resources that you're talking about, though? Money should be no object when of it comes to the lives of, of, the, of people. I get it, but where would the money come from? Well, we're, look, at people don't like to see their taxes raised. Let's face it. In many cases, you're going to have to see local governments raise their taxes. But when you talk to people about this and it comes to the safety of their children and their loved ones, they don't mind paying that price. So this shooter also, uh, again, we, t we said that her her, her family reported her missing on Monday. She also allegedly posted a website that is supposedly her website uh, that says, beware, dictatorship exists in all countries, but with different tactics. The only care for personal short-time profits, they only care for sh personal short-term short -term, short -term profits and do anything to reach their goals. Um, and here's her picture. I think a lot of people were surprised that the shooter is a female was a female. Yeah, I was too. Normally it is a male, but it goes to show you that uh, anyone, anyone could pick up a, a weapon, whether it be a car or a gun or a knife or whatever, and commit an atrocious act. But there had to be, as we now know, at least from the brother, <clears throat> some signs, some red flags. And I will say this, that there are more people who are going to come forward and tell the police, you know what? I heard this. I saw that. That's what's important for the police to get this information into an intelligence bureau and forward that to agencies in surrounding areas. And of course, we want to acknowledge a lot of the hard work that all the local authorities are doing. Uh, they just need to well, get better at Well, they need the money, they need the manpower, and, and they need funding. the training. Exactly they're, they're, right. They're doing a great job. Absolutely. Steve Rogers, thank you very much. Always good to see you. You're welcome. Thank you. John? Now this Fox News alert, some clarity from the White House with a statement out on Syria. Uh, Syria. It reads in part, the military mission to eradicate ISIS in Syria is coming to a rapid end with ISIS being almost completely destroyed. We will continue to consult with our allies and friends regarding future plans. This after President Trump said a couple of days ago that we will be out of Syria very, very soon. That raised alarm bells in some quarters of the intelligence and military communities, uh, people who said that we need to remain in Syria at least for the near term because ISIS will reconstitute itself if we do not. Otherwise, Russia, Iran will gain a foothold, an even greater foothold in that corner of the Middle East. So there you have it from the press secretary. Uh, we will continue to consult with our allies regarding future plans. Well, it has been 50 years to the day since one of the most influential voices in the civil rights movement was silenced. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee on this day in 1968. Today, a memorial to honor this iconic activist. Plus, special counsel Robert Mueller is now saying President Trump is not a criminal target in his Russia investigation. Does this mean the president is off the hook? Ari Fleischer joins us next with his analysis. The Russians have already been indicted. I think a dozen of them. Uh, man I think it's just semantics. Of course, the president is still still highly involved. Whether he uses the word target or not, he is not in the clear. And here we are more than a year later. It begs the question, how long are they con con going to continue to do this? And why did they start it in the first place? Because there doesn't appear to be any direct evidence that would justify going after the president, as the directive says in the document that Rod Rosenstein put forward. Joining me now, Ari Fleischer, former White House press secretary to President George W. Bush. He is also a Fox News contributor. Ari, thanks for being with us. So if you were still in the Thank White you. House and you got this word from Junior was assassinated in Memphis, thousands are gathering today in that city to honor the iconic civil rights leader. Jonathan Sari is live in Memphis with more. Jonathan? <laughs> Hi, Arthel. Uh, although the main program is still a few hours away, you can see people are already lining the streets behind me. Uh, commemorative events are taking place all over downtown Memphis, but the center of activity is going to be right here at the historic Lorraine Motel. This is the spot where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was gunned down while standing outside room 306. Former United Nations Ambassador Andrew Young was with the civil rights leader just minutes before the 
Kennedy assassination. Here's what he remembers. And I said, I think you better get a coat. And it was almost like he was, you know, looking up at the weather to see whether he was going to get a coat or not. And what I thought was a firecracker went off until I looked up and I didn't see him. The Lorraine Motel has been preserved as part of the National Civil Rights Museum. It will toll 39 times in honor of the 39 years of Dr. King's life. Arthel? Jonathan Seri, thank you. Tensions flaring up between China and the United States as China slaps additional tariffs on U.S. products. Could this escalate to a full-on trade war? Plus... H.R. McMaster is on his way out as national security advisor, but he's not done yet talking about how the U.S. has dealt with interference from Russia. Undermine our open societies and the foundations of international peace and stability. For too long, some nations have looked the other way in the face of these threats. Russia brazenly and implausibly denies its actions. And we have failed to impose sufficient costs. Joining me now, Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright and Kevin Sheridan, former senior advisor to the Romney Ryan 2012 campaign. Good to have you both. Antoine, I'm going to give you the first shot here. General McMaster also praised the Trump administration for expelling 60 Russian diplomats and closing the Russian consulate in Seattle. Still, as you're hearing, he's saying the U.S. and other nations, quote, failed to impose sufficient cause. So, Antoine, do you think further, more stringent economic sanctions are needed? Well, the Bible says in John chapter 8, 32, that the truth shall, shall set you free. And I think McMaster feels very free by telling the truth, which he, well, I'm sure he wish he could have said it a long, a long time ago. The truth of the matter is Russia attacked the very fabric of our democracy by trying to meddle in our elections. And in some regards, they were successful. And the United States, led by Donald Trump, has been very Okay, so soft are on further sanctions needed? Answer Abs the question, Absolutely please. are, because we have to send a message that the United States will no longer would tolerate this, especially going into the 2018 election cycle. I think that's very important, important for the protection of our democracy. All right, um, Richard, I mean, uh, Kevin, we started this segment by showing President Trump. He's saying that nobody has been tougher on Russia than he has been. Yet, uh, you know, the president called President Putin, President Trump called Putin uh, to gra congratulate him on his re-election, also potentially extending an invitation for a White House visit. So is it possible and prudent for the president to have it both ways with Mr. Putin? Well, nobody's been tougher on Russia than Donald Trump, but oh he doesn't gosh. match the rhetoric with it. He, uh, look, if you, if you compare his presidency to, to the last one, to Barack Obama's eight years of coddling Vladimir Putin as he invaded the Crimea, what did, what did uh, uh, Barack Obama do? He sent blankets and MREs. Uh, Donald Trump sent lethal arms. Uh, he can't, uh, Barack Obama canceled missile defense in Poland. Uh, Donald Trump reinstated it and gave him uh, Patriot missiles. Okay, he's, so can he's unleashed President energy. Trump he's done... have it both ways with President Putin? Yeah, I, I don't get why Donald Trump's, uh, I don't get a lot of things he does, but maybe he's playing a, a game here where his rhetoric doesn't always it's match footsie. up with it's what is. It's called political footsie. <laughs> well, <laughs> look, he's been, by any objective measure, he's been tougher on Russia than Barack Obama has been. And if you go back to the debates in 2012, Okay, so you guys are just not going to answer my questions. You're going to stick with your talking Kevin. and stop it. Antoine, I would like to have some sort of a intelligent discussion here. So if you would just not just do with, go along with your political talking points and listen to my questions and perhaps answer, then it would be better. So I'm going to ask a question. And I'd like you to answer it, Antoine. So how might the administration, the administration's stance on an aggression towards Russia change with McMaster's ousting and John Bolton's entrance as NSA, National Security Advisor? Well, I think that's going to be a wait-and-see project. But if Donald Trump, the leader of the free world, does not instruct 
um, his cabinet uh, officials to want to deal with Russia in a real way to prevent them from hacking into our elections, if he doesn't um, remind his cabinet how important it is to become tougher, and if he doesn't uh, lean in as the leader of the free world on Putin, not just Russia, but on Putin, I think we're going to be having this conversation next year, uh, later this year, after the 2018 election cycle. Kevin, I give you the final word. Look, his, his rhetoric's got to match up with what he's doing. His, his record is actually very good on Russia. It's, it's just that he does not seem to want to say anything bad about Vladimir Putin. I've never understood it, but it seems to be the way he wants to play this. If you look at his policies, they're very tough on Russia. Uh, then it's not just, uh, you know, it's not just sanctions. It goes far beyond that. It extends to the Baltics, to, to the Ukraine, to Poland, uh, to energy production. He's actually got a very strong record on that. And he's got John Bolton now and Mike Pompeo around him. Those are two of the biggest hawks in Washington. I don't really see the case that you can make that Donald Trump is not uh, surrounding himself and not being tough on Russia. He's just not talking about his record enough. Kevin, Sheridan, Antoine, C. Wright, we leave it there. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks. Four Marines feared dead after their helicopter goes down near the U.S.-Mexico border. What the crew was doing at the time of the crash. Plus, President Trump still pushing for the U.S. to pull troops out of Syria, but not everyone is on board. What critics are saying about those plans. Our primary mission in terms of uh, that was getting rid of ISIS. We've almost completed that. All 16 people on board. Well, just this morning, the White House releasing a statement about the military's future in Syria. It reads, the military mission to eradicate ISIS in Syria is coming to a rapid end, with ISIS being almost completely destroyed. The United States and our partners remain committed to eliminating the small ISIS presence in Syria that our forces have not already eradicated. We will continue to consult with our allies and friends regarding future plans. We expect countries in the region and beyond, plus the United Nations, to work toward peace and ensure that ISIS never re-emerges. Fox News senior strategic analyst General Jack Keane joins me now with his thoughts on all of this. Does this clear up some of the confusion that the president seemed to sow a couple of days ago when he said publicly that we're going to be out of Syria very soon? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, what he's saying here is we're not leaving until in the foreseeable future. We've got more to do with ISIS. There's 3,000 ISIS fighters between Iraq and Syria, and the leadership is down in southeastern Syria in the Euphrates River Valley. We've got to dig all of that out. And then I think also we, we have to make certain that we help stabilize that region. And what they're trying to do in terms of recovering the region is get water running again, get some electricity running again, um, get some hospitals opened up. I mean, after all, we brought the war to that region after ISIS took the land. We, we took it back. And so we're going to work with our allies here. But the allies have got to ante up. I think the president is dead right about that. We just can't be paying these bills ourselves. The Saudis, for instance, promised, what, $4 billion, $4 billion. toward right. reconstruction? Not How a dime. Of N not a dime they've paid? Not a dime yet. No. So he's going he's gonna, to, I'm confident he's going to get them to ante up. And he does seem to be good at that, getting um, NATO partners, for instance, yeah. to uh, increase defense spending? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, you, know, when you, you know, for our audience to understand that what's really taking place here, you've got to look at Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan as the forward defense against ISIS and radical Islam, similar to what we are defending in our southern border. That's how we're protecting the American people, by defending forward. And it's, it's a breeding ground for radical Islam, and it's still there. If we don't defend there, they're going to come here. You, you, well, before we get to the southern border, I just want to remind people, it wasn't that long ago that we were being subjected to those horrific videos of people being burned alive in cages and beheaded on the beach and so forth. We haven't seen that kind of thing from ISIS lately, and it's in large part because they're doing everything they can to just stay alive. Oh, yeah. We got them on the run, and they're hiding in holes, to be frank about it. But if we pull out prematurely before we reset the table then there's a possibility that they can come back, much as al-Qaeda came back when we prematurely left Iraq in, in 2011. That's the one thing we don't want to do. We don't want to squander these gains that we've made and, and incentivize them to reemerge. And does it also leave Syria to be carved up by Iran and especially Russia? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what, if we walked away, we cede all of Syria to Russia, to the Iranians, along with the Hezbollah. And the Iranians and the Hezbollah, John, are conducting a military buildup in Syria against Israel. And I'll tell you, the drumbeats of war are on the horizon as a result of it, and the Israelis are concerned. I uh, wanted to talk to uh, you about something that you mentioned a moment ago, our southern border. The president is ordering the National Guard to the southern border. It's been done before. It's national security team. Our Fox News military analyst, Dr. Uh, <laughs> Dr. General Jack Keane. That's okay. <laughs> we'll call you, Dr. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> okay, Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg soon headed to Capitol Hill as his company faces scrutiny over the data mining scandal what a House panel is saying about the upcoming hearing. And starting this month, no more signature required when you use a credit card. But what does that mean when it comes to protecting yourself against fraud? Of an era, but no one seemed to notice. That's because the end of the use of a signature for a credit card transaction has been gradually phased out during the last two years.